last week, Daily Sun reported that it took the intervention of a service chief to stop the Directorate of State Service, DSS, from arresting the Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, at the Lagos International Airport as he returned from his annual leave abroad. According to the report, the aircraft carrying Emefiele was diverted to the private wing of the airport where soldiers had been stationed and the presence of the troops prevented operatives of DSS from arresting MFL. The report has not been refuted by any agency or government. Only the Central Bank of Nigeria issued a statement that Godwin MFL has resumed duty after his annual leave with renewed vigor to discharge his functions. For MFL's aircraft to be guided to the private wing of the Lagos airport, where troops were stationed to provide him shield from arrest, it's a clear indication that he's enjoying the protection of President Muhammad Buhari's government at the highest level. President Buhari has himself heartily welcomed MFLA back from his annual leave in a public display of support. But against what and against who is the Governor Central Bank of Nigeria being protected? On June 15, 2022, the House of Representatives order paper had 11 items. Item 11 on that order paper was listed as personal explanation. That item was never allowed to be brought on the floor of the House because the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Femi Bajabia Mila, the Majority Leader of the House, APC caucus members and big wigs mounted pressure to force the item out of the day's deliberation. Our reporter obtained a copy of the order and the motion which was listed as personal explanation. It was, or we say it would have been sponsored by Honorable Segios Ogun, PDP, SN Northeast, SN Southeast Federal Constituency and was titled Call for Removal and Prosecution of Mr. Godwin Emefiele, Governor of Central Bank, for violation of the provisions of the Central Bank Act 2007. The motion never came up. But the details of the motion would the Speaker and APC caucus in the House effectively killed stated as follows. Call for removal and prosecution of Mr. Godwin MFL, Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, for violating provisions of the Central Bank Act 2007. Honorable Segios Ose Ogun. The House notes that Section 83, 1 and 2 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, empowers the National Assembly to conduct investigations into the activities of any authority executing or administering laws made by the National Assembly. Aware that Section 38 of the Central Bank of Nigeria Act 2007 permits it to grant loan advances to the federal government in respect of temporary deficiency of budget revenue as the total amount of such loans does not exceed 5% of the previous year's actual revenue of government. Also aware that the said Section 38 of the CBN Act provides that loans shall be repaid by the federal government the same financial year it was granted if the government fails to repay the loan as stipulated the powers of the central bank of nigeria to grant further loans to the federal government shall not be exercised informed that local borrowings of the federal government of nigeria from the central bank of nigeria CBN through ways and means advances in the past six months have been in flagrant 
breach of Section 38 of the Central Bank Act of Nigeria 2007, also informed that the said borrowings of the federal government from the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, through ways and means advances in the past six years, has ballooned to a total of 15.51 trillion naira, going by the Debt Management Office report of March 2021, worried that within the first six months of 2022, the federal government has borrowed a total of 2.4 trillion naira from the Central Bank of Nigeria, which is far above 5% of the federal government's revenue for 2021, which stood at 3.9 trillion naira. Also worried about the rising debt profile of the federal government of Nigeria, according to the Debt Management Office, which stands at 33.11 trillion naira as at March 2021, excluding the 15.51 trillion naira debt of the federal government to the Central Bank of Nigeria, resolves to urge the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to immediately remove Mr. Godwin Emefiele from office as Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria for violating the provisions of the Central Bank Act 2007. Also urge the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice to immediately prosecute Godwin Emefiele for violating the provisions of the Central Bank Act 2007. Mandate the Committee on Banking and Currency to ensure compliance and report back within four weeks for further legislative action. On April 11, 2021, the governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseke, had raised issues on Nigeria's rising debt profile, warning that Nigeria was getting into an impossible economic situation because huge amounts were being borrowed to service debt. The governor drew the attention of the nation to the printing of unearned 60 billion naira by the central bank, which was being given to states for the unproductive payment of salaries. Such printed money, which come as ways and means to meet revenue shortfalls, the governor warned, was not being put into any production to generate resources to pay back. The Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, denied the issues raised by Governor Obaseke describing them as sad and untrue. She said money being given to states were not just printed by the central bank to meet shortfalls, but were actual revenue distributed at the Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAC, and generated by the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Nigeria Customs, and Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation. But on April 16, 2021, the Governor Central Bank Godwin Emefiele tacitly validated Governor Basiki's position. He told journalists at an event in Nasarawa State that it is the job of the central bank to print money. And let's quote the CBN governor. I keep saying this. It would be irresponsible of the central bank of Nigeria or any central bank to stand idle and refuse to support his government at times like this. End of quote. The National Assembly has always approved budgets containing deficits and there has always been uh, sources of funding the deficit uh, stated in the budget. So if ways and means had not been stated and then the executive resorted to it, somehow is an affront against the constitution because they are supposed to declare it in the budget when they are going to do so. But I know as a fact that in some years, the federal government had indicated they were going to fund the budget uh, through ways and means. So it is something between the executive and the legislature they can agree on as a source of funding. And there's a recognition that ways and means can be used to fund the budget. That's why in the CBN Act, you have a specific provision for it. The CBN governor and the executive, the presidency, the minister of finance, they're all 
conspirators in violating the law. Indeed, the CBN has a restriction. It cannot give more than 5% of previous year's actual revenue. So if the federal government earned 100 billion, CBN is limited to give them in the following year not more than 5 billion. So by even giving them more than the law states. But what does the law say? In respect of the kind of support which God in MFLA is providing for the Buhari administration. We took up this issue and others with the member of the House of Representatives, Sejus Ogun, who called for accountability in the allocation of ways and means by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Hello. Remember that last week we made you a promise that for three Sundays running, we'll be focusing on the central bank. And last Sunday, we looked at the jurisprudence of Naira redesign. And we promised you that this Sunday, we are going to look at Godwin MFLA, the central bank governor, President Muhammad Buhari, our president, and ways and means. This afternoon, I have Honorable Sergius Ogun, PDP, Edo State. Honorable, welcome to the conversation. Thank you for having me, sir. We have a challenge. The president has written the National Assembly asking for approval of about over 21 trillion naira of money he has already spent. And this money was granted him as advance by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Are there no rules and accountability process in granting these advances? Well, under the CBN Act, uh, Section 38, CBN Act of 2007, the CBN can, through ways and means, give monies. But it will have to be 5% of the preceding year, revenue of the, of the country of the preceding year. Not exceeding 5%. Not exceeding 5%. So that is the approval they need, but carrying the National Assembly along. But I think the challenge has been, the CBN has been operating in, in defiance, so to speak, because today we are talking of, of about 22 trillion in the past seven years. So they have been giving more than 5%, and that 5% is to when you have budget deficiency, you know, your revenue. That is when the federal government approaches the CBN and it will be given. And that loan should be paid back that same financial year. But all that now has been trashed. The CBN governor has just been on his own. Even in approving all this, if the federal government had approached the National Assembly even, to say, okay, this is where we are, I think section, section 83, sub 1 or so of the Constitution, 1999 Constitution as amended, allows for a contingency fund, you know? But all that was jettisoned and um, became a free-for-all all, uh, business. So that's the dilemma today. So if the president is sending a bill to, to do what? Or sending a request to do what? To approve what has been spent when it was done in defiance? That's the big challenge now that uh, we don't even know how to resolve. No, but there's even another issue. What is the, uh, for want of better expression, what is the retiring process of these advances before under advance is given? Isn't there a retiring process, a time frame, a limit? Well, again, you know, the, many people have queried the independence of the central bank. But again, that is why we have um, three arms of government, you know, the legislator, legislative arm, the executive, and then the judiciary. And the CBM brings their budget to the National Assembly. 
So I think the National Assembly or the legislative arm dropped the ball. I think we should have actually have, uh, we should have uh, scrutinized this. Spotted this. Yes, and then take it, or this should have been taken up to say, look, you are already working outside the limit of your approval. And then that should have been dealt with long ago. But, you know, the, the, the challenges we've faced with this government in the past years, this past seven years going to eight years, has been where the, the National Assembly has been in bed with the executive. And as they claim it, now they have claimed that we are a rubber stamp National Assembly. Because, no, 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 let me interject. I have, I have a challenge there. <laughs> yeah. When they are in bed with the executive, is this romance outside of the law? Do they create their own conditions and leave the law which they promulgated or which they enacted ab initio? Yeah, but that's the challenge. When the two arms can work together, but one is supposed to act as a balance, as a check and balance to the other. But when they are both in bed, all for the convenience of is one party, is our Outside party. Outside of the law. Outside of the law. That is where we have found ourselves. There's nobody says you cannot collaborate. That's not because people say, you know, people say, why do you know why do you, they have to be fighting always? But I have always said when the two arms are fighting, the legislative arm and the executive, when they are fighting, the voters, the everyday Nigerians should just observe them. Because it might be in the best of your interest. It might be, your, in your, it might, might, might be for your good. Because when they're in a cozy relationship, they might just throw you under the bus. And I think that's what has happened right now. But this came under the guise of we need to protect our party. So the country is now suffering and pain seriously for it. And I dare say maybe we have also done our own job well, the opposition. So because even the, 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 our house rules and the constitution allows for that, to have an opposition arm. So that when some of these things are happening, if the chairman of finance fails to spot something like this because he's a member of the same party, we have an opposition. We have leadership there. They should have flagged this, you know. But like I said, I think it's a collective failure. I want to draw um, my own attention, really, to an alarm raised by the Edo State Governor a little early in 2020, 2022. Yeah. He said... Mm. 2021, matter 20, of fact. I think so. 2021. When he said that the central bank governor was printing money and giving to the states with this ways and means mechanism, and that the man was creating a challenge within the economy. And that brings me to the, to the, to the issue. This ways and means and the advance, what is it? Is it just that, is it promissory not just some words or we are printing money and giving to the federal government to offset debt? We are printing money. It's a loan. Deficiency of the budget revenue. So we go and print additional so money? Up, up. Yes. So, but I think the, the, my governor has been vindicated now because he was so vilified then. I was actually in a meeting in a, the festival hall in government house in Benin when he, he was basically talking to leaders you know, after the victory at the polls and the inauguration in, it was in November. You know? So he was meeting the leaders of the party to say, look, we don't have money in this country. The country doesn't have money now. We have to rethink, we have to reset. The, we, have to be, uh, we have to be creative in the way we run government. So letting the leaders know. And he even made a statement that day that this is what we face. This is what comes to the states every month through FARC. And this is what comes from the internal generator revenue. By the time we do X, Y, Z, there's little or nothing. So that you all here leaders today will tell me or we have to advise me on the way forward. It was just like a family meeting, you know. But I think when he said that, the cameras were there and they picked it up. When he said that initial, this is where the federal government is today. And maybe it was a good thing he said it then. But everybody descended on him and all that. But the truth, like they say, you know, is um, we always find it, we always come out, you know. And that's where we are today. 
But what people have, most of my colleagues have said it, the CBN could have taken this route, or even if not CBN and the government, the executive should have taken yeah. this route. You had challenges with funding. Should I be talking about uh, the contingency funding? You know? And then you get the approvals. If the National Assembly was carried along from day one, maybe that would have been a creative way of doing this. Not spend, 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 and now you are asking for approval of areas. You know? So that's the challenge, that's the dilemma. I, wonder, I want you and I to look at what this ways and means amounts to, really. You print money and you give, for instance, to government, to government agencies and state governments to pay salaries, for instance. That money has not been earned because the federal government has not earned that revenue. Then the federal government begins to work to give value to that money it has been cost to print. And that's why it's a loan. It's a loan. It's a loan. Yes, it must be paid back. So the, 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 the letter from the president right now is to document it because you still have to pay back that loan. Maybe mm. by now raising appropriate revenue exactly. that will match the money exactly. that has been printed. Exactly. Are we not aware of the consequences of this kind of economic voodooism on one, the value of the Naira and the national economy? Yeah, but that has become very obvious right now. So why is the Naira on a free fall? When this government came, it was about... Um, I was in the private sector then. I know the exchange rate was about 150, 150 naira to the dollar for a long time. It was towards the election because this same party in government now, they were overheating the policy then. So people were changing their money into dollars. Companies were leaving, you know? So that was capital flight. That was all led to, that was why it became about 190 something, you know, just some few days to the election was entering and a little after the election then with all the political capital that this government got when they when they when they took over if i guess the international community and all were watching if some, the right things were done i'm sure the naira still could have even appreciated a bit because there was no war there was no major crisis i mean even the president that lost the election didn't go to court he initially said the party could go to court, but he's not going. Then eventually he prevailed on the party not to go to court, prevailed on PDP not to go to court, and no such thing happened. These were political cap. Yeah, have encouraged. that could have encouraged the money to go back to about even max 160 naira to the dollar. But things were not done, opportunities were not taken, and then what happened thereafter? You know. So these are these are. Steps that, steps that should have been taken, we are not taking. That's where we are, where we are today. So rushing to print money, rushing to, to go beyond the limit of approval and issue money to the federal government to enable government meet deficiencies in budget revenues might just be a shortcut, but not the solution. But that's where we are, where we are today. When this government came in, inflation was single digit. But where are we today? You know? So it's not surprising that these things are happening. But I would dare say that the good news is there's an election next month. No, even before the election comes, <laughs> yeah. Honorable. So uh, the governor of Nigeria Central Bank can go haywire, do anything that pleases him outside of the law, creates economic challenge for the nation satisfies partisan political interests that are not in the interest of the economy and uh, goes home to sleep. And there are no consequences for this kind of infracting the law running down the economy. No, I don't think he's going to go home to sleep. I, I doubt if he's going to go home to sleep. No. Irrespective of who wins the next election, I do not think the current CBN governor will go home to sleep. That's the truth. But that is part of what they are trying to cure now by the letter from the president to the National Assembly. Yeah, but the president has already written a, 
I mean, he rose in defense of the, of, of the central bank governor to say, look, I approved his redesigning the Naira. I did that. And I approved his uh, limit of withdrawal, which are some of the amendment moves being made to impress us, the ordinary Nigerian. Uh, well, for me, I, I really don't have any problem with that because the redesign, like say, international best practice should be done maybe like every eight years thereabouts. And it has been done here for 20 years. That's not a problem at all. And if you have more money outside the banks, it's a danger to this country. I mean, look at the Western world. We all travel. We don't see people using jute bag or to carry cash. And the cost of printing the cash. So we can't be borrowing money to print money so that people will have enough to carry around. That is why you don't have kidnapping in the Western world. Because if it has to go through the financial... You can't, you can't get the ransom. Exactly, you can't get it. So if he must be transferred, it can be traced. So all that is good. You know, if you're talking about the cash limit, all that is good. It's a good thing that he has encouraged the CBN president to do that. That we applaud. But the illegality before is what we are addressing today. So I applaud them and we support them for that to go through. But even in the first case, we had actually started this cashless before Ms. Ville took over. I remember in the days of um, Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi, as it was then called, they were doing the cashless um, zonally. I remember I think that was Port Harcourt and some other part of the south-south. Yes, and then Lagos, then Abuja. There's a limit to what you could withdraw and all that. That had started. So if he had continued that, we would not have been talking about this today. It would have been part of the system. The policy would have been, you know, been effective. But, or be effective rather. But that didn't happen. So those are the missteps. Now, when you look back in retrospect, were they deliberate to allow some of what is happening today to, be, to happen? You know? So as much as we appreciate the president for standing by the, the CBN, government. Yeah, CBN governor to effect this policy, but too many things have gone wrong. And those are things I believe the president might just be helping the CBN governor to, well, yeah. Have to, a soft landing? I think so. On what is he going to land? Is he going to land on stone? Yeah, well, he's good, definitely going to land. Maybe the stone is just trying to make it a bit too soft so that the guy yeah, let us will not see, break his let neck. Us, let us see. Because it, it is obvious that the CBN governor, by these approvals, has immersed himself in illegality. He has disobeyed the law that establishes the central bank. But, sir, who should hold the CBN governor to account? And when? Well, the, he has a whole lot right now on his plate, besides even the ways and means. So I, the National Assembly, yes, should have done our bit, but even the public. I knew some people had come out to say, look, ways and means, this is not the way to manage it. The former deputy governor of the CBN, uh, Professor Mogalu, oh, well. yeah, he spoke about this. And I have also seen some financial experts that have spoken about it. Some lawyers have spoken. But like I said, I think the politics in the system not policy, yeah, let, let, politics. Let, let, let me hold you on to politics. Let me yeah. hold the politicians in the National Assembly yeah. to politics. Yeah. Isn't it your responsibility mm. to oversight the central bank? True. And if the central bank governor goes on a printing spree and he is committing an illegality, infracting the law, isn't it right and proper to pull him back and punish him for undermining the national economy? And what is the legislature waiting for? We, some of us are not as, as quiet as they might make it look. I actually brought a, a motion to that effect sometime last year. There was a lot of pressure for me to step it down. In short, my, there were so many issues that were raised. It was already listed on the other paper, you know. So... Uh, that, that, was, that was a whole, whole lot of... Uh, I don't want to go into all that yeah, now. Only, but I, want, <laughs> I want to hold you to something. Yeah. Where does partisanship begin 
an end and interest of the national economy mm. begins. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I guess that the we are all responsible for where we are today in this country. I I, I say that without um, without um, missing words. Yes, because we when we fail to take certain steps, those steps we fail to take, or if you call it missed steps, we affect our children and our grandchildren, and that's where we are going to today. When you put interest of political party or your region or your religion before the right thing. At that time, because most times when we raise our voices about certain policies, we are called all manner of names. You know, you are doing this against your brother. You are doing this against your religion. You are doing it against... And I have several times, you know, we've had arguments, even on the floor of the house. When you say everybody's on one side because of religion. Everybody's on one side because they are from a particular it region. It. Yeah, you, you know, so, and these are things for national interest you don't even come to play at all. He is my thief, but I've admitted that he is a thief. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, it's horrible, and I, I pray that um, we can focus. I, I also think the lack of structure has really affected the way we've managed this country. Structure many strong institutions. Yes, because besides talking about the National Assembly, other bodies would have raised this long ago. Even, you know, like we are talking before coming on air here, within the CBN, the red flag should have been up to say, no, sir, we cannot approve this. MFLA came from outside. He was appointed as the CBN from outside. governor from outside. But you have the bureaucracy. So people from within the the core staff of CBN. You know, you have a legal advisor. There is a secretary to the board. I would have said, no, sir, we can't go beyond this. People should have been resigning to say, look, you endanger this whole institution if you do this. No, but that didn't happen. So we have to go back to build strong institutions that will resist, that will, that will have the guard, the ray guards, and will protect it. You know? So it's not, uh, it's not a one-day thing, but I hopefully I believe we'll get there someday. Honorable, let me feel like didn't wake up one morning and began printing Naira. Muhammad Buhari, president of the Federal Republic, I'm sure would have made a demand on the central bank for these advances. And he was making these demands outside of the law outside of the provisions of the CBN Act and maybe some provisions of the Constitution. Is he not culpable in this procedural rape? And what should be the consequence for him? Because this is democracy, accountability. Of course, consequences impeachment. <laughs> but would that happen? The finance minister, I think is a member of the board of the CBN. No, the, the permanent secretary, the permanent secretary the minister of finance. That reports to the minister. the minister. So that's what you're talking about, the Ray Guard that failed to protect the institution. So beside even the staff, the bureaucracy in the CBN, there's a board. So if the president says Maybe most likely the, the Minister of Finance said, look, we have issues with funding the budget, which is the deficiency for which this was envisaged, ways and means. And we need loan from the CBN, and this is how much we can take. But taking this will not even be enough. Somebody definitely advised the president. But in any case, he is the one we voted for. So the box stops on his desk. So he should take the rap. So the consequences should have been an impeachment. But would that happen? I can sit down here. I can give you a categorical answer, which is no, it won't happen. Yeah, but this government told us that it will govern within the law. You still believe this government? Should we believe it? From their manifesto. 
the party manifesto to everything they have done today. It's all been a lie. It's all been a contradiction. They told Nigeria they were going to restructure this country where they came. In short, it was part. It was their manifesto when they camp were campaigning in 2014 into 2015 when they won the election. In 2018, they set up a committee headed by uh, the, governor. the governor of Cardinal State. And they came out with a recommendation through federalism. That was their own restructuring formula. Then we went into the 2019 election. Almost four years after that promise was made and nothing happened. 2019, today, now we are in 2023. Almost eight years down the road, you couldn't even miss that promise. I don't want to go into that of the security. Because the other day I gave an interview here. When they came, they also said they're going to take out Boko Haram in how many months? And I hear them say that Boko Haram were in over 20 local governments. Other times they will say, okay, they were in over 21 local governments, 17 local governments, depending on the side of bed. Whoever is speaking wakes up from 12 local governments when they took over. And then I have also heard most of them say, then that we were all in Nigeria here, then nobody could go out in Abuja to attend church service or go to mosque. For crying out loud. Yes, there was the Yanyan bombing, the bus terminal, and then the UN. That was when Boko Haram came in. And to be fair to our security agents, they were able to flush them out, out of Abuja. They were restricted to Sambisa or the Northeast. I remember the, I think it was the chairman of the, or president of the Chibok Association, those that they kidnapped their children. I can't quite remember his name. He said it in the last uh, inauguration of the president, of Buhari 2019, that when the former president, Jonathan, brought in platforms and equipment, that they chased the government, this is a civilian, that they chased Boko Haram entirely out of the northeast and they were restricted to Sambisa Forest before the election. So if you say the terrorists hoisted their flags in 21 local governments in this country, there was no part of this country where there was no election. And the part of the, part of the country where you claimed Got that the highest number of votes. You got your votes from there. You so supposed to be in the hands of Boko Haram. There is something you are not telling us. Since then, Boko Haram, either they were the youth wing of your, your party. of your party, or they were working with you. Because if they were in charge of those territories or in charge of those local governments, and you won those local governments handsomely with high figures, there is something you are not telling us. So I think they they are just not believable. That's just the word. They are not believable. So it's not, one can sit down here to say they told us they will govern this way. They haven't, there's nothing they have told us in this country that they have followed up on. So it's too late to even start talking about that. We should just look forward to the next election and then... On, before the next election comes, because we wear the shoe as ordinary Nigerians, and we know it is pinching, pinching hard. The inflation... Is making every earning almost useless. Bag of rice. And yeah. Some well, people well. just go ahead, print their naira, and meet their own obligations. Is there a way out of this quagmire? The way is to vote them out next month, barely a month from today. So we allow Muhammad Buhari and La Mefiele to keep their printed notes. All of us suffer. Until but we have a month to resolve that because too late we have lived with them for going to almost eight years and we're about a month away from making the right decision you know so and i hope nigerians will not give attention to what is not so if we are hurting we should go to the polls and do the right thing because otherwise they will come back again in a different color and then begin to sell out what to sell to us what is not so, but this is the right time. If we say we, are, we have suffered enough, if we say we are hurting, go to the polls. Teach them a lesson. Because the advantage of that, or the good thing about that, would be whoever is coming would know that those that have sent us here, they have the power to send us, to send us out. You know? 
But when you allow a system and somebody comes and then they you gonna know, repackage themselves and then come back to you and then they remain there, then you are compensating bad behavior. You know. Honorable Sergio Sugu, thank you very much for coming to the conversation. Thank you for having me, sir. Let's meet next Sunday. And don't forget that next Sunday it will be MFLA, DSS, and the allegation of funding terrorism. Good afternoon. At present, the National Assembly is in a quandary. President Muhammad Buhari is seeking for a retroactive approval of 23.7 trillion naira of ways and means provided by God in MFLA against the law. Will the lawmakers be the obstacle to a nation run on the basis of rule of law by putting a legislative stamp on the serial rape of the Constitution and the Central Bank Act? Or will they hold somebody to account?